Hey Raj, when I entered our school building, I saw students standing in various scientist costumes and welcoming everyone, as well as many beautiful scientific posters and quotes everywhere. What is so special about today? Today is the 28th February. It's National Science Day. National Science Day? What is it all about? It marks the discovery of the Raman effect by the renowned Indian physicist Sir C. V. Raman. That means this day is celebrated to spread a message about the significance of scientific application in our daily life. Wow, that sounds interesting. Yes, indeed. I heard our science teachers saying that we will have a quiz followed by science experiments performed by the boys themselves. I too have taken part in it. Oh, that's great. I look forward to an enriching National Science Day. Everything that surrounds us has some science in it. Science has become part and parcel of our daily life. It plays a vital role in our life and we cannot imagine life without science. I now call upon Master Melster Jesu Jagan to speak on the importance of National Science Day. Carl Sagan once said, Science is a way of thinking, much more than a body of knowledge. Good morning everyone. Science is the future of humanity, the contrivance of innovations. National Science Day is celebrated in India on 28th February every year to commemorate the inventions of our great Indian scientist C. V. Raman. The theme for this year is Integrated Approach in Science and Technology for Sustainable Future. India has efficiently used science and technology with the help of its brilliant young scientists for its development. Under the leadership of Dr. Homi Baba, India started using atomic energy for peaceful purposes such as increasing the yield of food grains, producing electricity from them, and many more. Green Revolution and White Revolution, led by M.S. Swaminathan and Dr. Vergis Kurian, have helped India meet its food requirements. Satellites like INSAT and GSAT have brought about a new revolution in the field of telecommunication. ISRO has started a new era of space research in India. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam's contribution in the field of missiles have made India self-sufficient in terms of defense equipments. The development in the field of medical science is also remarkable. Young scientists have helped eradicate deadly diseases like polio, smallpox, etc. Indians also found vaccine to the novel COVID-19 virus that has affected the entire world within the last two years. India has not let its beauty deteriorate at any cost. India tends to protect its biodiversity and culture. Due to the increase in population and high industrialization, deforestation was taken on a very large scale. But India, with the help of biotechnology, reforested as much as possible. Science is a major factor that made India foremost among all nations in the world. It has become self-sufficient in all ways due to the increase in technology. India will surely become a developed nation with a great aim to succeed. And finally, science may set limits to knowledge but should not set limits to imaginations. Thank you. National Science Day not only commemorates a great Indian scientist and one of his discoveries but also promotes science as part of our everyday living. When the approach of the society becomes scientific in every aspect, growth and prosperity will follow as the outcome. Today we need to invoke science and technology for the well-being of mankind and nurturing nature and not for accumulating luxuries and creating destruction. Wishing you all a happy national Science Day. Thank you. Good morning everyone. 
and a very happy science day to you all do you know why do we celebrate science day we celebrate science day in india on 28 february every year to mark the discovery of the raman effect discovered by an indian physicist c v raman i am mohammad ayan khan from class 8d and today i am going to be performing an activity this activity is based on magnetic properties so before we begin we know that there are several types of magnets the most common is the bar magnet then the next we have the horseshoe magnet and i know we all are familiar with this thing it's a compass and it has a magnetic needle inside and whenever it gets stable you know that it's pointing in the north and south direction this is a magnetic needle this too will point in the north and south direction similar to the one in the compass so as we have learned like poles of a magnet repel each other and unlike poles attract let's demonstrate this together first you need to take two magnets one that is hanging and a one in your hand you see both the magnets got attracted this is because unlike poles of a magnet attract each other now let's try reversing it and see what happens when i reverse the direction of this magnet and bring it they are trying to move away from each other in any way if i bring they won't get attracted this is because like poles of a magnet repel each other now for the third demonstration we need a bar magnet and some iron filings what we need to do is we need to place the magnet in this dish we observe that the iron filings gets stuck to the magnet now as you can see the concentration of the iron filings is more at the poles as compared to the body this is because the maximum power of a magnet is concentrated at its poles now for the last demonstration we need a stand a magnet hanging on it now we know that when a magnet is left suspended it will settle in the north and south direction Let's see that. When I leave it, it's rotating, and finally, after it stops, it will point to the north and south direction. As you can see now, the magnet has settled, and we know that this direction will be pointing to the north, and that direction will be pointing to the south. So these were some of the fun experiments you could do with yourself and easily understand the properties of a magnet. Thank you. I'm Riyansh Kanaria from Standard Eight A, and today we are going to do an experiment on water fountain. So as you can see, when the lid is off, the water does not flow to into the beaker. But let's see what happens when we open the lid. So as you can see, the water is going from high high pressure to the lower pressure. This shows that the fluids flow from high pressure to the lower pressure. Do liquids exert pressure? Yes, they do. The pressure at the base is downwards and at the walls is sidewards. So let us divide something interesting. So let us divide the liquid in three layers. The second layer holds the weight of the first layer, and the third layer holds the weight of the second layer. and that the pressure at the base is the maximum so let us find out so first we'll open the whole one 
the water flows at an angle. Uh, now let's open the second gear. The water flows at an angle which is wider than the first one. Now let's open the third gear. The water flows at an angle which is wider than the first and the second one. So thus we can conclude that pressure at the liquids exert pressure and pressure at the base is the maximum. Thank you. Hi, my name is Johan Kunjwani and today I am going to perform two experiments to show you that air has weight and about how electrostatic force works in the spectrum. So let's start the first activity. So for the first activity, I have a ribbon tied to the dead center of the scale and two balloons tied to the end of the scale. And as we can see, the scale is flat. So, when I remove one balloon from the scale, which is this one right here, we see a slight tilt in the scale. And this tilt is towards the balloon, which is still on the scale. And as we know, balloons are almost full of, full of air. So this proves that air has weight. Now let's start with the second activity, which is to show how electrostatic force works. So let me first inflate this balloon.
Okay. Now this liquid are poured inside this funnel. Now we will open the knob slowly and ensure that all the water has fallen. Now. As the oil approaches here, we should first close this knob. Now we can see that the water is separated from the oil. Now we will pour this water again in this beaker and remove all the oil in this one. With this phenomena, we have got these two separated liquids. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Keith Vaz and I am from Standard AD. And today I will be performing an experiment on air pressure. So for this experiment, we will require a glass plate, a tumbler full of water, a glass and a candle. So first we will add the water into the plate. And then slowly add, insert the candle in the center of the plate. Now we will invert the glass and cover the candle. We can see that the candle slowly goes off and there is a rise in the level of water. The can what, what is the reason for this uh, phenomena to occur? It is because First of all, the candle goes off due to lack of oxygen inside the glass. We all know that oxygen is required for any combustion process. Second, the rise of level of water is due to the air pressure. As the candle is, as the candle is lit up, it heats the air around it and the air exerts pressure on the edges of the glass, causing the water to rise its level. Thank you. The Science Day in Don Bosco High School was celebrated in the most scientific method. It was an approach that encouraged learning by doing, by the students and for the students. Standard 6th and 8th classes had the students perform science experiments and demonstrations accompanied by a detailed explanation on various scientific concepts. We also had the science quiz conducted in all the classes of Standard 9th in the science PDF format.